good entrepreneurship Tuesday morning to you. You are watching Y254 channel and this is Y in the morning, your favorite breakfast show. As you know, it's entrepreneurship Tuesday and it's about time we let you know how to make money or how to maximize the opportunities around your environment to enable you to be sustainable and to be able you and to enable you to sustain yourself in future. So today our first guest of entrepreneurship Tuesday. Oh, by the way, if you do want to participate in the conversation, you can find us on Twitter at Y254 channel. The hashtag is Y in the morning. Hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday. On Facebook, we're at Y254. On Instagram, we're at Y254 underscore channel. And in case you miss any of the valuable insight here on YouTube, find us at Y254 channel. With me in studio today, I have a queen. I have the CEO and founder of Trans Solution Services. And she's here to let you know how you can eliminate communication barriers to enable you to maximize the opportunities, whether in this country or abroad. Emanuela Aboa, kindly say good morning to the Y254 family. Good morning, viewers and listeners, and good morning, Hilda. Yes. Thank you for having me on your show. Mm -hmm. Now, it's about time you let us know why, why the interest in translating different languages, in training young people to be able to speak or interpret, and what was the importance? Where did, where did your passion for this delve from? Thank you for the question, Hilda. Mm -hmm. uh, Tone Solution Services really is a company that aims at transforming the lives of young people. Mm -hmm. Our vision as a company is to build uh, the current mm -hmm. and the next generation of African leaders mm -hmm. and create opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. And like you've mentioned it rightfully, we do so through uh, translation and interpretation and of mm -hmm. course uh, training and coaching. Mm -hmm. The translation and interpretation, we currently provide linguistic services in over 20 international languages. Mm -hmm. And the how, many, how many languages? 20 international languages. Wow. Yes, uh -huh. yes. We proud ourselves of that. Mm -hmm. And the major aim really was to break communication barrier, mm -hmm. to give the opportunities to young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to um, expand their businesses abroad without really thinking about the barriers of language or, mm -hmm. or of culture. culture mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. That's exactly the expertise that we bring into uh, when it comes to translation and interpretation, mm -hmm. maximizing global opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as far as the training and coaching is concerned, mm -hmm. we basically started to equip young people with mm -hmm. various skills mm -hmm. to make them competitive in the workplace mm -hmm. and uh, of course in the businesses. Mm -hmm. The translation and interpretation, I started because I'm bilingual myself, I speak French and English, so it was, way, it was a way of making money at the oh, beginning, yes. French and English. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. All right, so let me understand, is it, are you Kenyan by nationality or are you from elsewhere? Uh, I'm half Ivorian, half Senegalese, uh, but ah. I've been living in Kenya f since 2002, so it's been 16 years now. Uh -huh. My kids are born here, so I guess mm -hmm. I am Kenyan by force. Okay, Kenyan <laughs> by force, by force. All right, yeah, but, oh, no problem, no problem. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to understand, let's get to know the CEO a little bit. Yes. We'd like to understand your background. Where did you go to school? Uh, did you train for this? Do you need any training? And if, and if at all, I'm interested in linguistics and what have you. What do I need to know? Okay, uh, I was born and raised in Côte d'Ivoire, like I said, from... Uh, Côte d'Ivoire? Yes, Côte d'Ivoire, or yeah. Ivory Coast, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, I came to Kenya in 2002. I studied uh, business administration mm -hmm. from Edith Cowan University in Australia. Mm -hmm. Then I pursued a master's in business administration now uh, from Marymount California University. Uh -huh. So my background is mostly in business, sales, marketing, PR, and all. Mm -hmm. um, I started having an interest in mm -hmm. translation and interpretation because mm -hmm. of the opportunity that I saw in it. In mm -hmm. Back in 2011, when I uh, established my organization, mm -hmm. there were quite a number of international NGOs coming to establish themselves in Kenya, ah. and the language was still a barrier. Okay. And uh, prior to starting it officially, because now the University of Nairobi provides uh, translation interpretation as a course, but mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. there was no university that was providing such services. Mm -hmm. And I did not have the financial resources really to uh, enroll in a school and pursue that area. So I find myself a mentor, mm -hmm. someone who had been uh, in the linguistic industry for over 20 oh, years. Oh, you found yourself a mentor. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I, like I found that. myself a mentor. Mm -hmm. He's been uh, around for over 20 years, mm -hmm. working for international organizations such as the UN. Mm -hmm. So I went and knocked at his door mm -hmm. and I asked him to train me. Okay, so when you went there, you said, I would like to be trained. Yes. What, 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 what questions did your mentor ask you? What questions did they have for you? Why did they accept? Tell, t tell us, take us through the process of convincing a mentor to take you up. 
Uh, I, I knew where he was based, so mm -hmm. I made an appointment and went to see him, pretending mm -hmm. to be a client, a pretending potential to be client, a client. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. uh, and so we met up, and um, mm -hmm. now I disclose my true intention. Mm -hmm. And he laughed and he told me, I don't have time for that. Oh, uh -huh. he told me, I don't have time for that. You can uh, enroll in Sweden. He gave me a university in Sweden where he himself uh, studied before mm -hmm. becoming a translator. Oh. I said, what? I don't have the resources. <laughs> so what do I do now? Because I want to pursue that career. Mm -hmm. Then he asked me my intention. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that time, like I mentioned, it was mostly um, based on finances. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he tested me. He gave me a document and he asked me to translate. I did. Wait, so he actually put you through a yes, test? Yes, yes. Okay. There and then, right there and then. Uh -huh. I translated and he said, this is pathetic. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I had my, uh -huh. my, my spirit was broken. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's exactly why I need your help. Mm -hmm. And he closed his laptop and he said, well, I have another meeting. I said, well, you'll see me again here tomorrow and the day after. Mm -hmm. Because I know you are the best and I want to work with the best. Mm -hmm. He smiled and he told me, okay, come tomorrow at 8. And that's how we started. Wow. Yeah. So you actually did push. Eh? Please yes, don't, let, don't let people, don't let rejection hold you back. No, I you can shouldn't. see a lot of pushing here yeah. indeed. Okay, so let's talk about some of the, 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 when it comes to translation and interpretation, there's always the issue of people's dialects, accents, um, um, the languages, uh, street language, and what have you. How do you train, uh, how do you overcome such? Because that is still some sort of, because even in Kenya, the Swahili that Kenyans speak is not the same Swahili that... Uh, that is purported to be our national language. Definitely. So how do you deal? How do you deal with that? Um, what 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 training do you give when it comes to handling that? Okay, first of all, we do not give any training on translation and interpretation. Mm -hmm. Our training is based on self-awareness, development, and entrepreneurship oh, skills. Uh -huh. yeah. Translation and interpretation, we already work with qualified individuals. Uh -huh. Why? Because we are not a school, and we feel that University of Nairobi already does such an amazing job. Oh. Then we would not <laughs> want to come uh -huh. in uh, and, and spoil that. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to dialect and all, mm -hmm. we learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We've learned that many Mm -hmm. the, a similar word can have different meanings. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when we work with organizations, we also ask them if they have um, a directory of what. Mm -hmm. Because let's say for an ex example, I take a word in French called uh, pre. Pre. Mm -hmm. pre is price. Mm -hmm. in, or in certain English um, uh, countries, it could be awards. Mm -hmm. So there are different terminologies. Yes. So what we always inquire when we start off uh, an assignment mm -hmm. is to request the client if they already have a dictionary so that we do not uh, mix the words. Oh. Then we try to understand as well the context of the organization mm -hmm. because translation and interpretation is all about the context mm -hmm. of the language. So when we do, then it becomes much easier. Okay, interesting. Can I ask you um, if you've had an experience where you wanted to, to take advantage of a certain deal or a certain business opportunity, but you were unable because of that, because of, of inability to communicate? Have you ever had such an experience? Uh, myself, no, but we've uh, had clients. Mm -hmm. We've uh, A recent one really happened last year mm -hmm. when one of our clients wanted to get into China mm -hmm. and uh, the language was a barrier mm -hmm. and he felt that he was being taken advantage of. Oh. And so he came, he came to us. His partners as well were not uh, clear mm -hmm. and there were not a reflection of what he was sharing. He could tell, you know, even if you don't understand the language, you, you can, can tell, tell body when language. someone yes. is lying to yes. you creating certain things yes. and so they came to us and we've been able now we were able to go to China with them mm -hmm. and to be able to provide the services and indeed like in the contract when we realized mm -hmm. what they told him and what was in the contract mm -hmm. completely different interesting so he so this you the, the, the client was actually saved yes, he or was rescued saved from a by bad deal. solution services ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you very much we now acknowledge um aside from um i'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that they, that this is important so that people also don't take advantage of you mm -hmm. what other benefits are there that uh from 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 being able to speak different languages what other benefits can they, can you tell the young people at home mm -hmm. can you enjoy aside from uh being saved from conniving people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, there are many, there are many advantages. Let's mm -hmm. see from um, a workplace environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's say that you're working for a, a, a company. Mm -hmm. 
it exposes you mm -hmm. basically yes. because when you work as a for an NGO or mm -hmm. for the private sector mm -hmm. nowadays because we live in such a global world mm -hmm. huh, you are able to get promoted or get a assignment outside oh. your country of origin because mm -hmm. of the fact that you can um, speak various type of languages mm -hmm. so that brings opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, as an entrepreneur, really, it's about all about your businesses, mm -hmm. basically, because there are no barriers. So you can enjoy um, the opportunity that comes with uh, working abroad, mm -hmm. with uh, in, uh, establishing your business abroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that is all we want, basically, to make money. And mm -hmm. bringing, coming up with money really means having a different mindset mm -hmm. and taking advantage, like I said, of global opportunities. Yes. Okay, interesting. Now we understand at home. I hope you're playing, you're paying attention because class is in session over here. <laughs> yes, I hope you're paying attention. You can be able, even if you get promoted or you or you are, or you get posted to a different uh, work environment in a different zone, you can be able to go because you can be able to communicate and you'll be the best candidate for that job, you know. And of okay. course, as well as a translator and mm. interpreter, they mm. pay well. The industry pay quite well as well. Oh, for real? Yes, as a business, it's oh, okay. it's a huge opportunity in terms of your financial resources. Yes. So what we do, what do we call an interpreter or a translator translopreneur <laughs> 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 all right all right translopreneurs out there all right it's about how we talk about some of the challenges that you have faced in establishing your own company um most young people when they establish a company there are a lot of pitfalls um there are a lot of uh, failures that have that that happen some companies collapse some don't so we'd like to understand what are some of the challenges that you have faced or some of the lessons that you have learned when it comes to crisis management okay. to sustain for all those years you have been in operation? Uh, starting off was quite easy, to be honest. Like I said, I wanted to make money. Yeah. And uh, I did not have the resources, but I had a computer. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started my company, mm -hmm. using my computer data. Mm -hmm. And I started advertising the company as a translation and interpretation service. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's been eight years since the establishment of the company. Mm -hmm. Some of the challenges that we faced, really, when it comes to translation and interpretation specifically, mm -hmm. is finding qualified consultant or qualified linguistic to um, assist or to a work qualified with. Qualified consultant. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see, when you speak a certain language, mm -hmm. when someone comes for an interview, you can definitely tell, well, you're not qualified enough. Huh? Mm -hmm. You are not able to speak properly and all. But at the beginning, when I had um, Chinese translators, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, Indian translators, mm -hmm. but I could not really confirm the quality of, of the expertise and all because mm -hmm. I could not understand the language. So we've had challenges uh, as we start off. Because mm -hmm. now I will take a leap of faith mm -hmm. and uh, hire an individual. Mm -hmm provide them to a client and then mm -hmm. the clients will come back with feedback complaining about the quality of uh, the translation or oh. the quality of the interpretation. Mm -hmm. But with time now, we've been able to uh, put a good foundation. So now we work only with uh, people that we vetted mm -hmm. and um, yeah, people who have been able to help the company grow. So that was a challenge really mm -hmm. to not being able to understand all the languages that we currently provide. Mm -hmm. uh, another challenge was resources, mm -hmm. to be honest. If you want to make it in Kenya or anywhere around the world, really, you need money. You need mm -hmm. to build uh, a good uh, company. You need to go to a good marketing strategy. So you need money for everything. Mm -hmm. And that was difficult at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was really difficult because I did not have the resources. So to be able to cut down my cost, mm -hmm. Uh, I found a job. So really, I went back into employment and oh. the resources that I would get would be back into my company. So I used to reinvest into my own company okay. to be able to um, continue so as my much work. as you were working, you were using your, your income to facilitate your side exactly. hustle to enable you to live and stand on your own. Exactly. Oh, that's exactly. I hope you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I needed to be realistic. Mm -hmm. I did not want to take loans. Mm -hmm. I fear loans a me lot. Too. Yeah. As much as now they are good debts, but for me as a foreigner, I knew it will be very difficult to get a good loan in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they ask for so many information mm -hmm. and they want to ensure that you repay the loan on time. And with foreigners, I never know when you will be leaving the country. Mm. So I saw it already as a detriment in uh, my business. So mm -hmm. I needed to really focus on my own income mm -hmm. throughout. And that is what uh, I have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, until I made a name for myself. Mm -hmm. S another challenge really is was uh, my vision. 
I always advise entrepreneurs, when you want to start a business, just start off. Mm -hmm. Don't try to have everything perfect before you start off your business because mm -hmm. nothing is ever perfect. What you find yourself in is reinventing yourself every single day as you uh, progress because now you begin to understand your customer better. Mm -hmm. You begin to understand the <coughs> industry you are in better, the challenges that are there. So you reinvest yourself as time goes by. Mm. So there's nothing like being ready. Like no, no. <laughs> just start off. <laughs> Throw yourself. Uh -huh. Exactly. And uh -huh. then you'll be able to uh, get that clear picture as time goes. So mm -hmm. we've had to reinvent ourselves quite a number of times. Mm -hmm. And that was also a challenge because every time you reinvent yourself, mm -hmm. You need to be passionate about what you do. You mm -hmm. need to be uh, convinced about what you do because your staff need to be aware of the confidence that you have mm -hmm. to build them up as well. Mm -hmm. So having that idea of waking up every morning, even when you don't make money, to keep pushing your organization <laughs> was still... Um, a challenge for us yeah yeah all yeah. right interesting um uh, speaking of challenges um afan is asking um when we have uh, different global trades and technologies is definitely changing and we yes. have apps that can translate for us what people are saying and what have you how has that affected your particular company it hasn't in any way. Mm -hmm. Why? When we think about apps, we think about the Google Translates and so forth. Mm -hmm. Google Translate is it's a major app that people use for translation. Mm -hmm. And we've had clients actually, when they come to us and we bring a quotation, they find us a bit expensive. So they decide either to use Google Translate or mm -hmm. use other uh, cheaper options. Mm -hmm. But they always come back to us to rectify <laughs> the mistake. <laughs> Why? Because like I said earlier, mm -hmm. when it comes to translation and all, you need to understand the context, mm -hmm. isn't it? Google Translate is not human, so they don't have a mindset to mm -hmm. understand the context of the wording that you are putting, of mm -hmm. the sentence. Mm -hmm. So you still need the human touch to be able to translate uh, accurately. So for now, we don't feel the competition oh, from oh, those applications. No, that's all. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about crisis management when yes. it comes to uh, businesses because most young people when they're trying to set up they don't really think about what happens if something goes wrong mm -hmm. so I'd like to understand do you have any 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 uh, particular documents that you go by mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to dealing with a crisis in your company whether mm -hmm. it's financial or what is it do you have any plan when it yes. comes to crisis management yes we do but mm -hmm. this is a document that we created recently mm -hmm. oh. this, sh this should not be a barrier in starting a business really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you start off and then you realize Wow, I need governance structure in place. Yes. So crisis management come into it. Mm -hmm. For us with the training, because also um, some of our target market are mm -hmm. young people. So it means what? Um, mm -hmm. Child protection. Mm -hmm. So all this came about, about what? Four years ago, and yet we've been in existence for eight years. Ah. So as time went by then, mm -hmm. now we began to see the importance of that because crisis managers, management is quite important. Mm -hmm. Thank God we've never really experienced anything um, out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's because we've been working with individuals to help us put this document, um, an, ad an adequate document, and they've also trained mm -hmm. our staff mm -hmm. to be able to respond adequately to uh, various crises. Yeah. Interesting. Um, for, for, the, for the people who are watching at home, yes. if they wanted to access you, where can they find you? Uh, we are located on 3rd Gong Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in a building called Upper Hill Garden, mm -hmm. and the office is, is E03. Mm -hmm. They can also contact us uh, using our mobile phones. So currently, the mobile phones are 0722 mm -hmm. 87 mm -hmm. 0149 or 0721 75 93 67. Mm -hmm. We are also on all social media mm -hmm. platforms mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Facebook at Tone Solution Services, mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn Tone Solution Services, mm -hmm. and uh, Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. Strong Sync Company. I hope they can hear that because my accent, I can even <laughs> feel it when, <laughs> you know, when I speak. It's okay. When they Google Trend Solution, they'll be, <laughs> they'll able, be to able to see all. Ah. Yes. All right. Interesting. So um, when it comes to global trends and it comes to support from government and what have you, um, what more can the government do to support people in your line of work when it comes to linguistics? Are there any challenges that you have faced that the government can do something about Hilda, uh, I, I think I am from a different sort of school. I don't believe that the government should do everything. Mm -hmm. And that is even why, the reason why I put up my company. Mm -hmm. I think the role of a government mm -hmm. is to create a platform mm -hmm. where such 
where policies are made. Mm -hmm. You understand? So policies are made to ensure that we have a good uh, business environment, mm -hmm. that we are able to uh, market that our different organizations. That business environment is what I'm talking about. How is the but ease in, of doing in, in Kenya, I feel that there have been so much improvement. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. When I started in 2011, mm -hmm. um, First, I registered my company as a sole proprietorship. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, when we grew, I changed it to a limited company. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started, they used to request so many information. Mm -hmm. And it, it will take us about, what, four, five, six months. I remember my first four, certificate. Five, months to months get your yes, papers. Yes, it was, it was ridiculous. Those are the things I'm talking about. But nowadays, no. Ah. Nowadays, you can do it. You, you get your certificate within weeks. Yes, yes, actually like two weeks. Yeah, and you can, you can register on your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. The Kenyan government has done so much to improve ah. the ease of business. And that's why every year, I don't know what are the current statistic, but every single year, um, World Bank normally... Um, mm -hmm provide information regarding various African countries mm -hmm. and the ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Kenya has been improving for the past three years. Wow. Yeah, so I'm congratulations to the, to the Kenyan government. Yes, indeed. Ah. Good Kenyan government, there you have it. Props, props, props for you. Thank you so much for joining us My today. Pleasure. My yes, pleasure. Yes, you have been speaking to Emanuela Iman Aboa. She is the founder and CEO of Transolution Services. Make sure you do check out if you want to be global. If you want to maximize the opportunities in case you get promoted and you want to travel and go to another country. In fact, uh, there's a specific segment today on Entrepreneurship Tuesday on tour and travel. I'm so glad you came because now, <laughs> wow, it has just come. It has just blended in very nicely. Make sure you do catch up with Emanuela. And Barimo is coming up next with our next interview. My name is Hilda Wadidi. Please do not go anywhere.